Hello everyone, my name is Erin Lomax. I am the Education Specialist at the Smithsonian Marine Ecosystems Exhibit at the St. Lucie County Aquarium in Fort Pierce, Florida. Today we're going to be exploring oysters and oyster reefs. The activity packet for this module can be found right below this video. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to the education team at the aquarium. Our contact information will be at the end of this video. This module is going to be best for grades K through 2. We'll start with a short video overview. As I said, the activity packet is located right below the video. And at the end of that packet, you're going to find an answer key so that you can check your answers once you're all finished. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So what is an oyster? Well, oysters are bivalves. That means they have two shells, which they make themselves, and an animal lives inside. Oyster shells can be really rough and thick. Oysters are also mollusks. Mollusks are a group of animals that are invertebrates, which means they don't have a backbone like we do. Mollusks have soft bodies, and you can actually see what the animal looks like that's living inside an oyster shell and that grows that shell around itself. And it grows the shell to protect that soft body. Other types of mollusks that you might have seen before are snails, slugs, and clams. Now oysters like to live in shallow water that's either salt water or brackish water. So what is brackish water? Well, it's a mixture of salt water and fresh water. So if you had a little bit of salt water and you added some fresh water to it, you're gonna come up with brackish water. So brackish water is not as salty as salt water, but it's saltier than fresh water. Now all mollusks have a foot, and while it doesn't look like our feet, it does help the animal move around. But a mollusk's foot can sometimes make up most of the animal's body. So can you imagine if your feet were the biggest part of you? It'd be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? Now other types of mollusks that you might also be familiar with are octopus and squid. We don't generally think of those guys as being related to snails, but they are. Now an octopus doesn't make a shell to live in, but both octopus and squid have sharp beaks that are made out of something called keratin. It's the same material that our fingernails and our toenails are made out of. Now have you ever eaten an oyster? There's a lot of people that really love oysters, and maybe you're one of them. But have you ever thought about what oysters might like to eat and how they eat? So take a look at this picture of an oyster right here. This is what the oyster looks like inside of its shell. Can you see a big mouth? No, that's because oysters eat things that are very small. Oysters eat something called phytoplankton. These are very small plant-like living things that we need a microscope to see. These phytoplankton live in the ocean and they live at the surface of the water because they use energy from the sun to make food and there's more sunlight at the surface of the water. And this process is called photosynthesis. So phytoplankton photosynthesize. Now this photo right here at the bottom left was actually taken by NASA. It's a satellite photo. Now phytoplankton are very, very tiny. Like I said, we need a microscope to see them, but if there's a lot of phytoplankton in one area, sometimes you can see it from a very long way away, like in this photo right here. Now, we know what an oyster likes to eat, but how do they eat? Well, oysters are what we call filter feeders. That means they take in water from between their two shells and the gills of the oyster capture the phytoplankton. Then the oyster moves the phytoplankton to its mouth. Has your mom or dad ever used a pasta strainer to separate pasta from the water? Well, oysters strain water out of their food too. So I've got a cool video I wanna show you. This was taken by our friends at the Florida Oceanographic Society here in Florida. The tank on the left is empty and the tank on the right is full of living oysters. Now, once the oyster has filtered the phytoplankton out of the water, it will release clean water back into the environment. Oysters can eat other types of small particles in the water, and the water is cleaner 
after an oyster filters it. So oysters actually help to keep our water clean. And you can see what a difference there is there in just uh, an hour or two on that video. A single big oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water in a day. Now oysters live together in communities that are called oyster reefs. Baby oysters will often grow next to and on top of older oysters. And oyster reefs can sometimes be really large. So take a look at that oyster reef right there. That's a lot of oysters, right? Now living things that need energy to survive are called organisms. And every living thing on earth is an organism, including humans. Oyster reefs have a lot of different organisms living in oyster reef communities, including shrimp, crabs, and many types of fish. And some of these animals are ones that we like to eat, like anchovies and stone crabs. Now, in an oyster reef, there's a lot of places to hide from predators in between the oyster shells. Some of these organisms are what we call juveniles. So juveniles are very young animals who will someday be bigger. And these organisms use oyster reefs as a nursery until they grow up and they move to deeper waters. But oysters and oyster reefs help humans on land too. Because oyster reefs can be really big and they're attached to the bottom, they can help to prevent erosion. Erosion is when part of the land that's next to the water wears away from the force of the water. So when there's a lot of big wave action, like during a hurricane, when we have strong winds and big waves, oyster reefs help to keep our shoreline from wearing away. And this is really important since millions of people around the world live near the ocean. Now we already talked about how many different types of living things live in and around oyster reefs and all of those organisms need food to live. They need energy from the food that they consume to live. So plant-like organisms like phytoplankton and algae use energy from the sun to make food. So we call those guys producers because they produce their own food. Then there are other types of organisms that eat other organisms. Those are called consumers because they don't make their own food. They consume other organisms. Now, most living things can eat and be eaten by many different organisms. And to show how organisms are connected by the things that they eat, we use something called a food web. A food web shows us which organism eats what, and shows us how all the organisms are connected in an area. So let's look at a really simple food web. So we've got a little bit of phytoplankton hanging out near the surface of the water, soaking up the rays of the sun, making some food. There's some oysters on the bottom, thinks that phytoplankton looks pretty good. So they are gonna filter feed that phytoplankton. And then maybe a predator comes along, maybe a Florida stone crab comes along, thinks those oysters look pretty tasty, so it's going to use its crushing claws to eat the oyster. And then maybe a larger predator comes along like a grouper and eats the stone crab. Now when the grouper dies, its body becomes food for other animals, which can be much smaller than the animal that they're eating. It can also include bacteria. So in that little bubble there on the right, we've got some small organisms, a little bit of bacteria, and then those small organisms are gonna be eaten by a little bit larger organism, and it's gonna keep going and going and going. It's a never-ending food web. Now the food web that we used is very simple because as I said, most living things can eat more than one thing. So for example, oysters mostly eat phytoplankton, but they can also eat other small particles in the water like bacteria. So maybe the bacteria that's helping to break down that grouper, maybe those bacteria will be consumed by the oyster. Stone crabs will eat other types of mollusks. They'll even eat other crabs. And of course, humans can eat many different types of things. And in one of your activities, you're going to be making your own oyster reef food web. Just follow the directions on that lesson activity. 
So now it's your turn. Now that we know a little bit about oysters, you're going to find the activity packet located right below this video. As I said, at the back of that activity packet, you will find the answer key so you can check your answers once you're finished. If you do have any questions, please let us know. The best way to reach us is through email. Our email is smseducation at si.edu. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.